What is going on YouTube? Matt Rat 103 back here with my review for UFC on Fox 7, Henderson vs. Melendez. Alright, let me just say first and foremost that I hate my job. Alright, not really, but I initially actually asked for this night off to go see a Gabriel Iglesias show because he was performing about an hour from where I live. Uh, my buddies and I weren't able to get tickets, so I was like, okay, I can watch the UFC top to bottom. Haven't done that with a card in a while. And then my manager decided that time off requests for this weekend weren't going to be granted to certain people because... Our, you know, customer satisfaction numbers weren't great, you know, restaurant stuff. And so I got to spend most of my afternoon and evening uh, serving munchies to high teenagers, because it was 420, instead of watching, you know, every fight leading up to the main event. But I did watch the main event, and I've basically caught up on everything there is to catch up on. So let's get going with the review. All right. As I said, the one fight that I was able to catch live uh, was the main event between uh, Benson Henderson, the champ, and Gilbert Melendez, the former Strike Force champ. And I've actually got it on uh, in TV, on the TV in the background again right now. But, man, what a fight. And I have to give credit where credit is due. Gilbert made this a much tougher fight for uh, for Henderson than I expected him to. And, yeah, it was a tough fight to call. And let me let me just make one thing clear. Nobody got robbed. You know, I've you know been online the past 24 hours, you know, having conversations with people about this. You know, people think Gilbert Melendez got robbed. Guys, it was a close fight. I certainly gave Gilbert the first round. I certainly gave Henderson the fourth round. You know, those those were the ones that stuck out to me. But I gave Gilbert the second as well, and then Henderson the third and the fifth. So I had it uh, 48-47 for the champ. But I wouldn't have been surprised if Gilbert had gotten the nod. You know, I, I wouldn't have been mad because it was that close of a fight. You know, kind of like Henderson's second fight with Frankie Edgar. So, you know, hats off to both guys. They both really, you know, really let it out there, really let it go, and... I was very impressed with Melendez's, you know, his scrambling ability especially and his ability to effectively neutralize uh, the grappling of the bigger, stronger Henderson. And especially in the first round, you know, he was walking him down like the way that, you know, Nate Diaz wanted to and, you know, had been so successful with in the fights leading up to his fight with Henderson but wasn't able to do. Gilbert was able to walk him down, especially in that first round, and really make him uncomfortable against the cage. But Henderson, you know, being the incredible, incredible athlete, incredibly smart guy that he is, was able able to make the adjustments, and you know, start turning the fight in his favor, especially in the later rounds. So, you know, great fight by both guys. They really, really put in a show in the main event on Fox, which is always great to see. You know, great for the sports growth as you know, casual fans are watching this and seeing these guys put on a great technical fight. And uh, what's next for each of these guys? I think you know Dana White said that Henderson is going to defend his belt next against the winner of Gray Maynard and T.J. Grant uh, next month at UFC 160, which I expect, which I expect to be a hell of a fight. And as for Gilbert Melendez, uh, you know he's got a few options. You know, if if he had won, I certainly would have wanted to see uh, Melendez versus Thompson Ford, just because the first three fights were all so close. But you know that being said, you know he did lose. I'd say you know he's st he's still top five, probably top three in the division. You know, three or four depending on uh, where you count Pettis and and Frankie Edgar if they're at one fifty five or one forty five. But personally, for Melendez, I'd like to see him fight probably the winner of uh, Jim Miller and Pat Healy, which is also coming up, I believe, next month if not next week. So yeah, uh, Melendez Melendez against Miller Healy and you know Bendo against the winner of Maynard Grant. All right, and moving on to the co-main event of the evening, that heavyweight collision between Daniel Cormier and Frank Mir. Uh, Cormier took that fight 30-27 uh, across the board, so, you know, impressive debut for him, even if a lot of people, I think myself included, expected him to put Frank Mir away with strikes, just because Cormier is so fast and he hits so hard, and Mir just kind of has a penchant for, you know, losing by strikes. But, you know, Mir came into this fight in shape. You know, he looked uh, cut compared to even when he... You know, he bulked up, put some muscle on to try to keep up with the Lesners and the Carwins of the division. He was still kind of, still kind of had the belly. You know, he definitely came in, you know, cut for this fight in really good shape. So, you know, I think he was prepared for whatever uh, Daniel Cormier could throw at him. He just couldn't stop it. And, you know, Cormier, he said, you know, he did maybe have some octagon jitters that, you know, maybe kept him from really, really pulling the trigger and really going for it, just wanting to, you know, not make a mistake and end up, you know, getting finished himself, but, you know, you take all three rounds from Frank Mir, you're doing some things right. So, you know, what's up next for these guys? Uh, it's tough to say with Cormier because he is such good friends. 
with the champion Cain Velasquez, and there just aren't too many people in between him and Velasquez. And especially when you consider that, you know, Junior Dos Santos, Fabricio Verdum, those guys already have fights. You know, the options become limited. You know, maybe, you know, I, really I think the best option for Daniel Cormier is to go to 205 just because, you know, I wouldn't count on Kane losing anytime soon. And there are just more interesting fights for him there. You know, if he wants to get a title shot with him next year or so, you know, Leota Machida, Alexander Gustafson, Gegard Musasi, Ryan Bader, just a few guys. So if he goes to 205, I think he will certainly have more options than, you know, just trying to kind of tread water and, you know, wait for top five fights to open up so he can fight guys who are worthy of fighting him. And for Frank Mir, uh, the fight I'd like to see right now would be him versus Stefan Struve. You know, they're both coming off of losses, but both guys with very comprehensive grappling games. Struve causes, you know, a lot of trouble for guys with his, his height and reach, and I think that'd be a really fun fight. And I'd like to see, you know, Mir down the line against somebody like Fabricio Verdum. But with Verdum, you know, doing tough with Nogueira and possibly getting a title shot off a win, you know, who knows. You know, got to put that in the back burner now. But, you know, still some interesting fights for uh, Frank Mir at heavyweight. All right, and next up there's that uh, lightweight fight between Nate Diaz and Josh Thompson. Uh, Thompson was victorious with a uh, TKO slash corner stoppage win. Uh, rocked Diaz badly with a head kick and just swarmed him with punches until... You know, the ref pulled him off, and Diaz's corner threw in the towel around the same time. So, you know, congrats to Josh Thompson. You know, I favored Diaz coming into this fight. Didn't think Thompson was going to have much in the striking and wrestling department that Nate couldn't prepare for or hadn't, you know, seen from previous opponents in his experience. But, you know, Josh took it to him. And, you know, Thompson even said in the post-fight interview or at the press conference that he had played this fight out a bunch of times in his head and that the head kick knockout was not one of the ways that, uh, he envisioned it, he envisioned it ending, so you know, big surprise to even Josh Thompson, but again, congrats to him. Welcome to the UFC. And you know, Nate Diaz, you know, he, he looked a little off at the weigh ins, you know, came in that pound overweight before shredding shedding the shorts, so you know, we'll see what happens with him if he stays at lightweight or moves up to welterweight again. But uh you know, next up for these guys, Josh Thompson. You know, the fight I have in my head for him is you know, maybe the winner Donald Cerrone, KJ Nunes, especially if that's Cerrone, because you know Cerrone, you know, perpetually still kind of in the top ten. And uh, another fight, maybe Ross Pearson, a guy who's picked up you know two straight uh, knockout wins of his own. And you know, it's just hard to you know to think of guys to fight these guys because you know with Anthony Pettis and Frankie Edgar both being you know tied up at 145, you know there aren't too many viable top ten top 10 contenders who haven't recently fought, you know, guys in the top five, but, you know, if Pearson or someone like Cerrone steps up, you know, I think those would be great fights for, uh, for Thompson, and for Diaz, I think the first fight that comes to mind would be Joe Lozon, you know, they're doing a, another card in Boston in, uh, August, and both those guys bring it, you know, they, they were on top five together, but I think they'd have no problem, you know, throwing down, they both like to bring it, both very aggressive, and that just has fight of the year written all over it. All right, and finally, the uh, main card opener, fight between uh, Jordan Mine and Matt Brown. Matt Brown won via TKO, uh, some nasty elbows to the body, ended up being uh, the final blows in that fight, and man, what a fight. You know, the first fight I saw was the main event, Melendez versus Henderson, and I thought for sure that was going to be fight of the night, but I went back and watched this one, and yeah, Matt Brown, Jordan Mean, man, they took it to each other for, for six or seven minutes, and Matt Brown was eventually the one to come out on top, and man... I will never question Matt Brown's heart again. You know, Jordan Meehan hit him some, with, you know, plenty of clean shots, especially those nasty shots to the body in the first round. Matt Brown rallies, you know, ends up almost taking him out with a with a triangle late in the first round, and you know, takes it to Jordan Meehan in the first minute of the of the second round and puts him away. And man, yeah, you know, I've doubted Matt Brown just because you know we saw him lose three straight fights by submission just a couple years ago, but he has made leaps and bounds since then. You know, he's, you know, he does have a couple wins over some iffy guys, you know, Chris Cope, Luis Ramos, but, you know, Mike Swick, Jordan Meehan back-to-back, you know, Matt Brown is legit, so, you know, I'd like to see him get, you know, a top 10, top 15 opponent next, you know, someone who can really test how much he's improved the last couple years, and I think that is Martin Kampman. You know, the UFC doesn't like to put together winners versus losers, but, you know, Kampman just lost to the number one contender. Brown's looking to, you know, sneak into the top 10. I think that's a fight they can sell, and I think it'd be a hollow fight. And as far as Jordan Meehan, you know, another another hype derailed by by Matthew Mortal Brown and 
you know, Jordan Mead is still tough as hell. I mean, Matt Brown, you know, he, he put him away with some nasty shots, but, you know, I don't question Jordan Mead's heart at all. And he had Matt Brown in plenty of trouble on his own in the first round. He's still, you know, very young, only 23 years old, still has a very high ceiling in the sport. And next fight for him, I'd like to see him fight uh, C.R. Bahadurzada. You know, I probably butchered that, but, you know, C.R. also a guy coming off a loss to uh, Dong Hyun Kim. But, you know, those two going at it in the striking department, you know, that's got fireworks written all over it. And finally, just some thoughts uh, on the undercard from UFC on Fox 7. You know, six more fights ending by way of strikes. You know, so top to bottom, really an action-packed card. Uh, you know, two more strike force guys debuting with wins, uh, Yoel Romero and Jorge Masvidal. So, you know, congrats to those guys. Welcome to the big stage. Uh, good night for Team Alpha Male with uh, the three-headed monster known as Mendevita Shaw. All three of those guys winning their fights, all you know, by strikes. So, you know, Team Alpha Male looking good this year. Eight zero between uh, Benavidez, Mendez, Dillashaw, Faber, and uh, Danny Castillo. So. You know, look out for those guys this year. And that's about it. Uh, I will have uh, fights I'd like to see for everybody who competed on this card in the description below. So thank you very much for watching, and take care.